Excuse me, folks. Can I get your attention? We're about ready to start the show, so if you all could take your seat, that would be great. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Tuesday, April 16th. Now, in case you're one of those people that doesn't know what I do on this show, I like to share my personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. That's what I trade every day from bell to bell, stocks under five bucks, and you can find them on every single market. And I am constantly keeping my eye open for a stock that has heat, that has potential to make us money. And when I find one, I want to share it with you. And that's what I want to do right now. This is Southern ITS International, ticker SITS, SITS. Now, SITS has got a pretty decent chart right now. At this very moment, she is in the midst of a double breakout. She is not only going over her 200-day SMA, but she is breaking out of her uptrending channel. And she's got a lot of decent things going on right now, but they're all wrapped up around that pink limited information, which is bad news. Pink limited information means that she's late on one or more of her financials. And if she doesn't get them caught up in time, it could be detrimental. She could be yanked off of the OTC and thrown down to the expert market. Now, that's not a delisting, but it's close. You can't trade the stock while she's on the expert market, and they will stay down there until they catch those financials up. Once they do, they're back on the market. Well, this has got some good news wrapped around it, a bunch of good news, actually, and they are catalysts, so I'm excited to share this with you. Sits finished the day today, just about five and a half cents, and she was up over 18%, which was a jump of over eight cents. As I said, she is on the pink limited tier, but she's got her validated information. We got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. These are real important, especially on the pink tier. Pinks don't have any validated information, not even their financials, which they call disclosures. These are just numbers passed off to us by the management. Fact of the matter is, with pinks, you're taking management's word on everything. So to see some validated information is always reassuring. So what is SITS all about? Well, they tell us here that they are going to build an experienced management team that's going to build a diverse portfolio, buying entire companies or interest in them, involved in technology, oil and gas, manufacturing, real estate, and other sectors like apparel, beverages, food. I've seen them mention those as well. And then all those companies are going to turn into subsidiaries. Well, right now, the company has three subsidiaries. This is their website, and they tell us a lot of what it is they're doing, working with their sales network and e-commerce internet, their strategy. They tell us about other media sites that have covered them, so they're telling us a lot of what they're going to be doing. But what are they doing right now? That's my question. Well, these are their three divisions. We have Pure Oil and Gas, Inc., now, they just had news come out here recently, which we're going to take a look at. They said at the beginning of February, they were ready to start accessing one of their four wells and start getting oil out. And they said that was going to be happening at the beginning of March, I believe it was. But we haven't heard anything since then. And they did just receive $2.2 million worth of funding for that one. Shibu, I don't know about this one. This is a very strange division. I only found a few products here. They're very unique feminine products. They have these pasties that look like nipples for women, and they have panties that have no straps, strapless panties. I don't know how much business they're doing with that division. And the third one here is Restora. I'm going to presume that has something to do with restaurants because I don't know. There's no link. It doesn't go anywhere. There's no other information here that I can see. But this is what they say they're doing right now. But I'm going to share information with you that shows you they're doing a heck of a lot more than just this. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Doing pretty good. She's up over 300% today, jumping from 127,000 shares a day over the last 30 days to up to almost a half a million today. Definitely got some excitement building up here. Share structure for the company isn't bad. We got about 110 million in the outstanding share count. The insiders, the management, they own 41 million of them, and we get all the rest. That's about 68 million. Now, don't get spoiled thinking you got to have a 10 or a 5 million float to have a decent float. 
Anything under 100 million really is a pretty decent float. Not a lot of room to complain there. Market cap for SITs, we're at about 5 million right now. Let's take a look at those financials. At the end of 2022, they had some money on the books. They had $91,000 come in. That's not 91, it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. And they got to bring home over 50% of that in profit. Now, we do have the most recent annual report out. We're going to look at that. It just isn't listed here. Take a look at the quarterly reports first. Wowzy! Look at the surge in September of 2023. For a year, she wasn't doing anything more than $30,000 a quarter. And then all of a sudden, I'm not quite sure why, she jumped 600% in revenue to $185,000. Still bringing in about 50% of that in profits. Take a look at that balance sheet. So far, so good. Cash and cash equivalents, what they've got in the bank, about $228,000. Assets are pretty light. We got about $776,000. Oh, God. Liabilities are not light. That's a hammer to the head. Almost $7 million in deficit. Oh, something else has been added on here. I'm not quite sure from where, but we are up to $8.7 million deficit that we are hanging on to, the shareholders. Now, if you're getting into this for a long hold, that's concerning. But if you're a day trader, you're just getting into this for, for the run and you're going to take your gains and get out, that's not a problem whatsoever. Take a look at those disclosures because this is where the story sits. We've got two filings over here I want to share with you. That annual report, but first I want to share this one with you. Notice of change of holder interest. This is a change of control. Now they give us a lot of words here, but really not a lot of information. It's a real short filing and basically for all the words they've got here, all they're really saying is this company, JCG LLC, which is an Arizona limited liability company, acquired 100% of the voting shares of SITS. That's not to say they got all the shares, but they got all the voting shares, so they now have controlling interest in the company. Now, they don't give us any more information in here about what their plans are, what the operations are going to be, assets they're bringing, none of that. All we know is that there was a change of control. Now, let's jump into the most recent financial. Now, there's some real juicy information in here that we're going to get to at the bottom of this financial. Up at the top are all the numbers, and we do want to go over these because these are fresh numbers for us. We just saw at the end of 2022, they had done $91,000 worth of business. Well, they just quadrupled that up 400% to $395,000. They are running at a loss, but it's a lot less than it was by 50%. Last year, they were running at a loss over $13 million. Now they're running at a loss at $6.2 million. So they're cutting that down hard and quick. Additional paid-in capital. This is investments from the insiders going into their company. At the beginning of 2022, they were at $6 million. At the beginning of 2023, they were up to $16 million, And they finished off the year at $18 million. So they are constantly pouring money into their own company. And sad to say, the stockholder deficit has not changed. We're still up there near $8 million. And let's see, is that it for the numbers? It is. So let's get down to the very bottom of this financial. We are going to subsequent events. You'll find this in virtually every single financial, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have anything listed there. Subsequent events are exactly that. They are things that happened either during or after the period for which they were filing. So they couldn't get this into the filing. So it got shoved in at the very end. And there's some juicy stuff here. I'm not going to go through it all, but I am going to read the hottest stuff. Starting with the change of control. In February, the president of the company sold 5 million shares of Series A preferred stock. This was the controlling block of the company. They sold that to JCG. In March, the company entered into a securities purchase agreement with other owners of Growth Goods so that the company now owns 100% of Growth Goods, making it a wholly owned subsidiary. 
Also in March, the company entered into another agreement, a purchase agreement with Ingenuous Roasters. They now own 55% of that company, so they've got controlling interest of that too, making that a subsidiary of the company. Also in March, the company entered into a restructuring agreement with the other owners of Pure Oil and Gas, Inc., the subsidiary they already own. So now the company owns 100% of that subsidiary. Wow, how many deals is that? We got Growth Goods, we have Ingenuous Roasters, and now we have Pure Oil and Gas. Also in March, the company filed for a corporation name change from Southern ITS International to Corp HQ, which is currently pending for approval with FINRA. So we got a lot of things going on here. They're changing their name. I don't know if they're changing their ticker, but they're changing their name. They just made three deals here. They are getting more assets. We've got new management coming in. Money has increased in revenues. So things are happening here. We just can't see the direction of the company. What is it exactly that it's doing? Well, when we jump on over here to the news, let me see, we got news over here. We only have three pieces of news to consider. The one I've already shared with you about the pure oil and gas commencing drilling on their first of four wells, and they got $2.2 million invested into that. And they tell us at the beginning of March, they were anticipating to be doing something, actually bringing oil out and making money. We haven't heard anything more about that. In February on the 6th, the company filed their 10 registration statement. This is what's necessary, folks. This is I primarily think those are preliminary. why they are pink limited. They have their annual financials in there, but they have got to get their 10 registration approved. That is all part of this, their audit for change of control. Once all of this gets taken care of, we should get back to pink. That other piece of news is the one that pretty much summarizes everything I've been saying here. The company disclosed today that it expects its status on the OTC Pink open market to temporarily change to limited information. We've been advised by the OTC markets that our status on the pink market will be changed from current information to limited information. While the OTC markets finish reviewing our disclosures regarding the recent change of ownership of the company's voting control stock and election of new officers and directors, both as disclosed in our filing with our OTC Markets Group on February 25th. I shared that one with you. The company fully expects this review process to be finalized within the next two weeks. This came out April 2nd. Today is the two-week mark, the 16th, at which time the company will be able to post its annual report. That came out today for fiscal year ended December 31st, 2023. And then we will return to current information status. So not only have they made more deals, gotten more subsidiaries, made more money, got that filing in, the annual's in, the 10 form is in, that's going to go back to pink. Folks, everything is good here except for the fact that they're holding stockholder deficit, which a lot of people don't pay attention to as day traders. There's a lot of information day traders don't pay attention to, but we've got a lot sitting on the table to get this stock running, and she is in a position to run. She is in the midst of a breakout right now. Let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at ticker SITS, Southern ITS International, and we're looking at it on a one-day, one-year chart. It was almost a year ago in May, we hit a high of 8.9 cents, and then she dropped all the way to this low of 1.7 at the end of December. Now, as you can see, most of the time she was above that 200 with a lot of volatility. She was bouncing up and down up there. Then she crashed real hard and extreme down to this low bubble. And even with her bounce back, she only came up to the 200. She did not come over it. She's been stuck under the 200 ever since until now. Now she is starting to make a move. Now, when you look at this chart, you really can't tell at a glance if it has any heat. If it's in an uptrend or a downtrend, what the heck is going on? Well, let's use some tools to give ourselves some perspective. First thing I'm going to do is determine if she's in an uptrend or downtrend. So I'm going to grab my regressive channel. Now, this is a tool anybody can use because it does all the work. All you got to do is poke the day that you want it to start and poke the day you want it to end. 
I'm going to poke this low bubble and drag it to today. As you can see, we are in an uptrend. Once she came out of this low, she hit that 200, came back into this channel, and this is where she's been climbing all this time. And right now, she is breaking out of the channel and breaking out over the 200. Now, I'm going to get rid of this line because I'm going to put some more lines on the board and I don't want it to be all congested. What I'm going to grab now is my Fibonacci. Fibonacci will give us some algorithmic supports and resistances that we can literally trade on, the price is going to respect, but none of them are really going to be attached to any historical price points, which is normally where we get our supports and resistances. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to poke the high bubble here. I'm going to drag this over to the low bubble and poke that. All of these supports and resistances are legitimate. We can use them and they will be respected. Now, what I'm really looking for is that 50% mark, the halfway point. Everything above it is positive zone. Everything below it is negative zone. When a stock has a super duper run like you had here, when it falls back, and I expect a rocket stock to come back down to earth, we don't want to see it come past the 50% mark. Well, this came below the 50% mark, hit our 50-day SMA, bounced up, and right there, we're on our 50%, our halfway point, and that's when she actually got her jump off of that. She had another bounce off it right here. Now, she's come all the way down to the very bottom one here, and she is working her way up, and where's she at right now? She is right at the 50% mark, the halfway point, going into the positive zone, breaking out of her uptrending channel and breaking out of the 200-day SMA. This is all on the yearly chart, looking pretty good. Now, our volume isn't something to get excited about. It was stronger earlier. It's kind of getting weak right now, but she is going in the right direction. And I do see our 200 haul is starting to climb. Mine is set to two colors purple when it's falling, blue when it's climbing. Believe it or not, the 200 haul, which most of you are not familiar with, has as much authority and strength on the board as the 200-day SMA. And the great thing about the 200 haul, penny stocks really pay heed to it. They like to use it as a diving board. They will actually bounce off of the 200 haul and jump right up on top of the 200-day SMA. I see it quite a lot. Oscillators on our yearly chart look pretty good. Every single one of them is turned up and climbing right now. All right, let's come on down to our four-hour, six-month. We're going to keep all these supports and resistances on here. We're not going to put our channel in there so it doesn't get too congested. But remember, we are breaking out of that channel right now. So now, on our six-month chart, we've still got the same high. We've still got the same low. But you can see now what is happening. She has been trying to fight through this 200-day SMA. She hit it here, hit it here, took a big dip, and then a big rip. She needed a running start to get through it. Now, what concerns me here is that our 200-day SMA is not level or flat yet. Normally, when you have a price jump up onto this 200, when she's like that, it's a slippery slope. She'll come back down to it and a lot of times just slip right up underneath. But if she can jump enough times up on top, she will keep tugging that 200 up until it's level and then she'll take off. All of our SMAs, our 200 haul, our 50, our 20 are all about ready to cross that 200-day SMA. I'm telling you, that's going to help. Those are golden crosses. Think of them as turbo boost to the price. Oscillators are looking really nice. Every single one of them is gradually climbing, and it looks like they're getting stronger and stronger right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, we got a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner. To me... That's the definition of a perfect chart, regardless of what's going on in the middle. So we were down here at 3.7 cents, worked our way across the 200, and just kept floating up on our nine-day SMA, hitting that high of 5.4 cents. She did drop down to the 20, you know, just to balance herself, and went right back to her climb. Now, this chart's looking impressive because everything is turned up. Even our 200 is starting to climb now, and all of our other SMAs have already crossed the 200. Oscillators are still strong. Every single one of them is climbing up. Can't go wrong if all of your oscillators are climbing. And finally, our five-day, five-minute chart. Another perfect chart. 
Low bubble five days ago was four and a half cents. Now it's 5.4 cents. And she has been floating on that nine day except for the dip through the 20 and back up. She looks pretty good. The only thing I see here is that she is getting a little bit away from the nine day SMA. The price can't get too far away from the nine day. There's a rubber band attached to it. It'll come snapping right back. It's not too far right now. And the great thing is she is on top of our 50% mark, that halfway point on our Fibonacci. She is now in the positive zone. She was working hard to get out of the negative zone, crossed over with this high bubble, split the difference, made up her mind to sit up on top of there. All of our SMAs are looking strong, but we don't have a 200 day SMA on the chart yet. And now that we've got a closer look, the volume was pretty good actually. You can see it was pretty wimpy the last few days. Today's volume was getting strong as she's breaking across that 200 day SMA in her yearly chart, as she's breaking out over this halfway point on our FIB and she's coming out of that uptrending channel. Everything really looks good here, folks. What's our next point? Well, she's gotten up on top of our 50% mark, which is at uh, 5.25 cents. The next one is up there at 6.1, and then she jumps up to 73, and our last one up there is at 88. So I think, looking at her, she looks like she is ready to do some climbing. That's not to say there won't be bounces, there won't be dips, but I'm not anticipating her to fall. She's made a lot of new deals, her revenues have increased, they've got new management. They're about ready to go pink. Holy cow, this sounds like a bouquet of flowers, and it's looking really pretty. What it needs though, no, not a vase of water. <laughs> it needs you to do some more due diligence. You know I didn't cover everything and there may be some more information out there about the companies they just got a hold of and the company that just acquired them. You know what I always say, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> <laughs>